Hello, folks. My name is Tommy NC2010, and who is this man right next to me? This this who me? Yes, this he guy. Is, he is the one and only cosplayer. He is. I hate the gate. I hate the blow his identity. But he is the man behind the mask. He is the man behind the myth, the legend, the myth, the rap champion, which I'm going to take him down for it one day. It's going to go down. And I'm going to take that title. I'm going to stand over him. But that's for a later date. That's for a later date. Because the fact is, we're talking to the one, the only, Moby Lee. Yes, that's and right. The international superstar. Moby Lee, a.k.a. Mr. Muscular Chest. It's it's not a thing yet, but it's going to it's gonna become a thing. Trust me. Oh, yes. And you're What's gonna... up, man? How's it going? It's been a while since 2016. Um, yeah. What has happened to... Now, this is for a Tommy Talks. Honestly, this, this should be a Tommy Talks episode. But, folks, I wanted to grab the international superstar known as Moby Lee. And you say, I don't know who Moby Lee is. Moby Lee is not relevant to me. Well, Moby Lee is relevant to me. You understand me? This man right here is relevant to me. I'm not Keemstar. I don't treat this man like trash because he has lesser subs than me. I care about this man because I smelled this man. I looked in this man's eyes and I saw potential. I saw magic. It's magic in the air. It's all I need is happen. I need to see my side. I need to see the king. I know it. The king I see inside. Can you see the fire tonight? I, I was about to try to sing along, but I, I guess I didn't know that. I was singing it wrong. It's Tarzan, right? No, I, Lion King. Come Lion on. King. Lion King. No, that's when Simba and now uh, it's. Can you feel the love tonight? I would much rather sing. I want to be a mighty king, so enemies beware. Yeah. No, i never seen a king or beast with quite so little hair. Yeah. I want to be the main yeah. event like no king was before. Yeah. See, I, hey, I know. it's. I didn't expect that song to be coming out at this point. And it threw me off is what that was. I am so well, sorry. Bad. That's why I changed <laughs> the lyrics. That's why I changed yeah, the lyrics. That's why. I tried to come in. I was like, whoa. Because like, I know the melody. But the lyric that threw me off is what happened. What that's all that was. The lyrics now, hey, here, back on the same page. Lobotomizing myself of saying, <laughs> you know, because the the figure idea is, I think my client. Is the best in the business and the best you've ever seen. Moby Lee is the man that will destroy Roman Reigns. And that the fact in the WWE, he will be the first Afro American champion of the world. And they will prove that the statement that WWE is racist will break the nut. What do you have to say about that, Vince? Whoa, wait, wait a minute. Wow, whoa. Look, hey, I, I didn't say that. That was all him. I, I don't think that WWE is racist. I, they're a great, beautiful company. WWE, if you ever want to sign me, just know that I think you guys are great. Got a whole wall. Dedicated to Come you. Me. I got I got my Come on. I got my Rusev Day calendar. Every day is Rusev Day. So if you uh you know Somebody please put a bullet and put it yep. in your brain right now. This man is blinded by darkness and wrongness, please, somebody. All right. Throw so, me into a wood chipper. New podcast that we're starting. Me and you, Moby Lee. <laughs> Um, you got this. But something that me and him were talking about before the podcast is the name of it. And I was thinking, because you have so many adoring fans, and so many people that look up to you and are inspired by you and positivity, I feel what we should call it. 
What's that? If you said something, I didn't hear you. I know, I heard something, but I, I didn't oh, comprehend all. Of it. It's or, weird. It, it, at one moment, it froze. I don't know why. And it oh, just... I don't know what. Okay, so whatever part, I'm gonna just repeat it. Whatever this podcast that we're doing, I think your fans should name it okay. down in the comments. I feel we leave it up to you. And... It is. We're gonna name it podcast then we'll... one, episode one, because. You guys are going to decide what we should call this podcast, this new creation. So welcome to Podcast yeah. One. Not not trying to take away Stone Cold's uh, network because apparently, I guess that's an, I guess you're, because I'm a WWE fan, you're a WWE fan. So the fact yeah. is, was that a dab with your hand? No, I was scratching my eyebrow. It was itching. I was about to give you some flack. I was about to put you through a solid steel table, which I hey, um, owe you. Uh, you understand me, boy? Oh, my gosh. We can't I, have trash talk just yet. We'll have the trash talk later on. Let me tell you something. I, I'm going to put yeah. this out here now. Because Tommy NC 2010 oh. rolls to the jungle. And he could pick out his targets. And he knows what to do. Because this is my yard. And so, as we start podcast one. Um, one of the my, one of me, Moby Lee, I have talked with him about this. And one of the subjects I want to particularly talk about is Team Four Star. And, Team Four Star. Oh, yeah. Shout um, out to Moscow X, by the way. Moscow X has his own channel. He's the one who voices Goku. And unlike Team Four Star with making us wait years for Drag Mozzie a Bridge, which I still love and I'm still gonna keep watching, he's so like so consistent with everything. He has like a what if series that has all these different storylines that he like creates all these stories and stuff for and there's reviews and all the I episodes. Have not so like his channel really. I've, I've been... It's amazing. It's I, amazing. I'm so angry at Team Four Star because I'm so addicted. But also, how do you yeah, feel? How do you do? You feel ripped off that Team Four Star basically didn't give us a, a finale. They gave us th two episodes of the Cell Saga wrapped up all together. Cell getting b annihilated. And him singing basically, I did it my way. I, mean, I enjoyed it. I feel like it definitely took too long. It shouldn't have taken. I don't know why it's doing this. Those videos is what channel as big as it is. But, I mean, at the end of the day, it's all because we're Dragon Ball Z fans. Any type of Dragon Ball Z, we're going to jump to an embrace. And as much as we would complain about the lack of Dragon Ball Z bridge, we all know when it comes out, we're all going to flock to it. Yeah. Well, the thing is, I think they are... What makes me sad about this is the idea of saying basically now that we are... They're they're saying what I'm understanding what Kaizo Neko said was basically they're not going to after after they're done with the after they're done with the three episodes of of Cell Saga they are dropping the abridged series with Dragon Ball Z and they want to move on to new animes and I'm like I understand but the well, fact they didn't say that on the the new one, they said it was going to come back. The new season's going to come back. At the end of the third one. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't oh, know if you... you see, did you see that one of the videos parts. got striked? They, I was... I went on there. They updated... They finally... Was that recently? Huh? How recent was that video that you seen? Because it's on the third episode. Well, part three of the cell finale. They said that they are going to come with a new season next year, which I mean, that, that might just be one episode for the whole year knowing them. 
But I mean, I'll still watch it if they do. It's like I don't expect it at all, so my 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 expectations are super low. But I enjoy it when it's out. What but I that's s- why I look at Netflix so much. What I do is when there's a whole season and the producers of Team Four Star are producing episodes of Team Four Star, I try not to watch the episodes because they're so short and they're so funny. That I, I, I'm like, okay, where's the next episode? I'm like, it's not yet produced. And I'm like, oh, that's why when I waited a little bit, I watched all through the, the saga of the Frieza saga. <laughs> I couldn't help but laugh and say that Frieza's a racist. Hmm. Because the whole entire time... Freeze! I, I don't know. Did Freeze actually say this in the original series? Did he call Goku a stupid monkey? Yeah, but that's that's different. That's not racist because they actually turn into giant apes. I understand. Well, I, I don't know why I'm trying to look in the benefactor of 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 that because I guess what it is is the idealism of saying. That Frieza, monkey. yeah, because like, uh, I mean, in real life, if you call someone like monkey, it's racist. But when you call an alien race, it actually transforms into apes, monkeys, and have tails. But what's really racist is them making Mister Popo. That's that's like the most racist thing in Dragon Ball Z, and that's like we love <laughs> Dragon Ball Z so much that we don't even acknowledge Mister no, Popo. No, they did. They remember. They acknowledged. They said. We shouldn't be talking about this. What about Mr. Popo's lips? We shouldn't be like, acknowledging this, Goku. No, he's like, oh, we're, we're allowed to talk about that now? <laughs> we're not allowed to talk about that. Yeah, but no, it's it's a great series. Oh, no, and it's unfortunate this. you can't put it out more, but I enjoy it. I didn't like how they made it like Gohan was such a coward and all this stuff. And it's like, yeah, he's 11 years old. He's not gonna want to fight. Gohan's never been a violent person. No, he even hasn't. like how, how it was. It was never a, a thing where it was like, oh, he used to be such bad a, eh? and then he became soft. And I'm like, no, he didn't want to fight against Cell. He was a little kid who didn't want to fight. Who was thrown into it, and then he killed him. And after that, it was peaceful. Gohan wants to live a normal life. He doesn't want to be the universe's strongest warrior. Like, leave that to Goku and Vegeta. Let Go have a normal life. Unlike Goku, who neglected his kids their entire life, Gohan has a, a wonderful wife. He's rich. He's a scholar. He's a professor. He has Goku a movie rich? after him. This. How was Goku rich? Because huh? I, I, I break down this theory on, okay, does, does do the cities that the, when he saves the world... Does the do the does the grand mayor come to Goku and say, Goku, here's a million dollars. Here's a, it's not Goku, but Goku is rich though. He's rich in Super, because on the have you seen Super? No, I Dragon Ball Super. Well, on the it's not a spoiler because it's literally the first episode. Hercule legit just like goes to him and gives him like two trillion dollars. And Goku, like, in my opinion, Goku has no value in money. Because Goku, in his head... He's a <laughs> What does he need money for? No, he doesn't. Food, he doesn't need they, money. Because the well, man exactly, trains... They, all the, all they the, live in the middle of nowhere. Yeah, they live in the middle of nowhere. All he does is train, takes his 11-year-old son out in the wilderness and trains with him. Chi-Chi's screaming at him, and no matter what... Goku still is just like, okay, I'm taking him. And I, I, I really like how Team Four Star pointed out how bad of a father Goku is. And uh because yeah, horrible. he like and then also the fact that Gohan even expresses that the fact that basically you left me with a complete stranger with an alien at that, and then you died and never came back. Yeah. What do I do? Climb down. Yeah, maybe I should get a ladder. Climb. 
watching that scene. Wait a minute. What does that thing Kitten told me to do? Ah! Uh, oh, bloody hell! Yeah, or like when... Because when they did the Gohan training scheme with Piccolo, he was telling him to dodge this and dodge that. And he, when he actually dodged Cell... And they have like Kami and Piccolo and no no Kami and Nail and Piccolo's head and when he actually died sells the tags like um is this what being proud feels like? <laughs> that was funny. I love the part. Uh, my 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 favorite part with the Piccolo and the kind of father bond with Piccolo in Team Four Star was the part where he's like. Uh, Mr. Piccolo? He's like, what? You want a key just like your father? He's like, well, I was hoping I could have a key just like yours. <laughs> and Neil's inside. He's like, wait a second. Did our heart just skip a beat? And he's like, <laughs> shut the pop up. Yeah. Uh, so hilarious. I love those interactions. Honestly, I, I, I like the whole Neil and Kami thing inside of Piccolo's head. It definitely makes it more interesting because in the actual Dragon Ball Z it's like sunken in the subconscious but in there they're like present the whole time. But they never talk. Like they're they're not like I know the difference between... I'm talking about in the bridge they talk. In the actual show they don't at all. They're like trapped in the subconscious. You should definitely... If you're a Dragon Ball Z fan, you should definitely watch Dragon Ball Super, by the way. Amazing show. I, and I don't like, know why I never... I, well, the problem is, I can't get into a show... I mean, not trying to be rude here, but I, I can't get into a show that doesn't... It's not in English, and I can't read subtitles. Oh, it's in English. Really? Yeah, it's not completely caught up, though. Um, but they have, like, the first three seasons in English. It's on every week on Adult Swim. Really? But you can like up stuff. Yeah, I heard, it's I, like they started. They're behind, but they're catching up because the Japanese version's done for now, and it's gonna come back next year. But the English dub of it is still being released. So mm -hmm. if you want to watch it, you can start now, and you can binge it for a while because there's like a hundred episodes out in English. Wow. I think what I've just been doing is I've been watching the abridge um, with, uh, you know, because I love Team Four Star and I just like watching that because watching the, I, I looked, I realized that Team Four Star is just basically what, what they do in there is they just freeze frame on conversations that never happen. And um, yeah. they, they just zoom in on that one particular pose like, there's a conversation going back and forth between, uh, you know, Krillin and Piccolo. Or a, a conversation, like, for instance, the conversation with Cell. He's like, are you just going to stand there? Are you just going to stare into my perfect eyes? <laughs> he's like, what? Yeah, I'm sorry, what were you saying? <laughs> Goku actually yeah. falling into this kind of scene. Like, there's like... I'm gonna hate. The game of romance. Miss him. Hmm. I said they gave him a bromance. Yeah, they kind of they kind of gave Cell not so much of a heartless killer, and really you could see as as you could see in the original, Cell was a heartless killer, and he just wanted to have a tournament, and but it well, turned I wouldn't say like he was still like fair ish, like he wanted to show the planet. But the sand cells in him wanted to make it fair. Like, if you guys can beat me, I won't. Like, he wanted a good fight. You know, and I, I kind of find it interesting that Team Four Star pointed this out. That basically, they every single episode, they let the villain get to full strength. And then they absolutely just sit there and get pulverized. I'm like, wait a minute, isn't the idea... Well, that didn't happen with Frieza, though. That, well, I feel like that doesn't happen as much as people make it seem because with Frieza, Free, they let Frieza get the full strength, but he was still a lot stronger than him and he killed him with no problem. But they didn't 
let like Vegeta and Raditz them to get the full strength. They're just already stronger. They only do that when they know they're stronger. They know they can beat them. I still love. I still love that the fact that Vegeta is uh, angry because he can never reach Super Saiyan, and he doesn't understand that you have to have an emotional breakdown to be a Super Saiyan because. That's how Goku became a Super Saiyan was because he watched his best friend literally blow up in front of him. Like, p- bits and pieces of him flew everywhere. Yeah, it wasn't the first time he's seen Krillin die. That's the thing. Krillin died in front of him in Dragon Ball. Really? Yeah. But he didn't turn Super Saiyan. He wasn't strong enough then. You know, yeah, I'm a huge Ball Z fan. I would have found it interesting if Goku and Dragon Ball had turned Super Saiyan. Um, well, it's funny you say that because Mosco X, the person who voices Goku on Team Four Star, has a What If series about what would happen if Goku turned Super Saiyan in Dragon Ball. That is interesting because I definitely think that Goku could have uh, really uh, improved himself, and I, I did peep a lot of people. Um, ah, sorry, I am just laying here on the floor, so my my legs are going numb. Dude, I'm laying in my bed, and my legs are just fine. Oh, <laughs> Mr. Comfy over there is like, yeah, I'm an international superstar, and I'm just going to talk how uncomfortable, uncomfortable Tommy is right now, well, sitting on his floor. I could, I could hey. generously just scoot up my 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 uh my chair but right now i'm just gonna say right now i am just wearing i am wearing a suit and tie and vest and i am not wearing any pants right now okay <laughs> yeah, for well, everyone that's know that what i said i'm sure everyone watching is happy to know that <laughs> That's the benefits of being a YouTuber. Yes. I'm wearing a stuff freaking Rollins shirt. You know, I want to say something. The wrestlers that you like, I don't like. I mean, Seth How Rollins. How would you say? You don't know the wrestlers I like. I mean. I like almost all the wrestlers. If right, let me tell you something. If you, I swear, if you tell me that you like Brock Lesnar. I will literally... No, if I ever see Brock Lesnar, I'll fight him. I'll beat Brock Lesnar up. He... Brock Lesnar, if you're watching this, you better hope I'll run into you, punk. I'll knock you out, Brock. Come see me. See what happened. That, that's it. I got it off my chest. You do realize that I challenged Brock also. Like, I, I challenged him also. You do know that. Like, didn't you see you my video? My... Go to him, Vegeta. Huh? We'll take turns like Goku and Vegeta. We'll fight them one on one. Play rock, crew, scissors. Who gets to fight them first? So okay, okay. So I'm going to break this down as Team Four Star. I'm basically going to see Moby Lee. This is going to be Moby Lee. I'm a Super Saiyan, and it's just like I'm going to punch you in the snaz. What the hell did you just say to me? I said, I'm going to punch you in the snaz. <laughs> and I was going to go, ah! He was like, hey, how are you doing in there, Moby Lee? I'm surrounded by gumdrops and ice cream. Really? I'm surrounded by idiots. Is that the... Was that the cooler one or the android? No, that was the episode that that Vegeta and Goku were first ever fighting. The first ever showdown that they ever fought. And that was in Team Four Star. Where he was basically going at Goku. And Goku puts him into the wall. And then he's like, how is it in there? And he's like, I'm surrounded by gumdrops and ice cream. Really? Can I have some? And he's like, I'm surrounded by idiots. 
if we're wrong, please tell us, folks. I'm sorry. I I only I know some of the references. It's funny how you say if we're wrong when you're the one saying it. You can't rope me into this. If you're wrong, correct them in the <laughs> comments. Yeah, I, sorry. I I don't remember that scene, <laughs> but I'm sure it happened. Oh yes. Yeah, Team so Four Star is so long in between uploads. It was like you because I I started watching Team Four Star when I first. When they first started putting them out, I was watching from the beginning. I and found like, them on accident. Honestly, I found them on accident. I, I was watching... What were you looking up? You've seen it. Hmm? What were you looking up when you were when you bumped into it? Possibly just Dragon Ball Z, episodes of Dragon Ball Z, and I started watching an episode, and I was like, what the heck is this? And I'm like... And I was checking out everybody else's dubs, and I was like, okay, these dubs are better. You know, these dubs are much yeah. decent. They're more, yeah. they work better together, honestly. And so, the thing was is that I was like, okay, I'm going to subscribe to this channel. I'm going to see where this goes. Really? Hmm? I said, yeah, they're really good. Oh yes, they're good. They 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 explain that they do their own mouth movements and stuff like that. They even take out yeah. the original mouth and they edit in their own mouth. It's tedious, but not hard, because it's just like two pictures. Because in Japanese animation, their mouths only move up and down, so like they're talking like this. So it's not hard, but it's like it takes a long time. I wouldn't want to do that. I can imagine the people at Team Four start sitting there hours and hours drinking yeah, coffee but... and like saying, How many times does Goku's mouth move up? And how many they're like and how they must sit on the floor with their hands over their heads, just crying their eyes out, just like I mean, not often because it takes three years to put out an episode. Three years? Can you imagine three years working on something over and over again and then being like, okay, guys, we're going to do another three years with the next episode? They're just like. Yeah. Really? Gonna see, I have a four star Dragon Ball. Mine, 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 mine. Mine, 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 mine. That was the reference to Vegeta of him. My grandpa Gohan gave it to me. <laughs> Your what? Grandpa Gohan. Grandpa Gohan gave it to you. <laughs> and I'll pass it down to my. One of my favorite scenes from the Team Four Star series is when. Vegeta is going by Gohan, and he clearly says, What you doing? Follow my plans? He's like, No. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. He came back. What be? What are you doing? Follow my plans? No. <laughs> no. You sure about that? <laughs> Good. If you did, I'd have to hurt you. <laughs> <laughs> I love the part. I'm sorry, like, I, I mean, just the parts that make me laugh is Vegeta goes down into the water, he's like, wait a second, it's not here, where did it go? He's like, and then, he's like, wait a second, oh, and then Ghost Napa pops up, he took the Dragon Ball. Yeah. <laughs> and he thought, like, the Dragon Radar was, like, a weird-looking watch. He's like, that wasn't a watch! That was a Dragon Radar! Yeah. You could literally hear him screaming, and I love the I love the mix in between Trunks. Yeah, future Trunks. <laughs> Daddy. Uh, okay. ah, but you know something interesting they did not do. I noticed what. If you listen closely into Trunks' origin story on how the androids kill, the part where he's talking with his mother, you hear Vegeta. But you, he does not stop and say, Daddy? He does not say that. He, uh, you hear, 
Ah! That would be impossible, by the way, if it was, if it's, and for trying travel, it aggravates me because, and they, like, it's a split universe. I'm like, why would Trunks, if it's split universe, and there's a, complex, it's basically saying, okay, here's a lot, okay, I'm going to use a definition, please don't get mad at me, here's a wall, a massive wall. On one side of the wall, you have one universe that the androids have killed every, all the Z-Force. And then you have one universe where Goku is just getting back from Namek. Z-Fighters. I'm sorry. You said Z-Force. That threw me off. <laughs> Z-Fighters. I feel like in the comments. I'm going to tell you before the comments do. Can the comments? They're going, no, Z-Fighters. What are you talking about? I, 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 I beat them to it. I got your back. But yeah, on the other side of the wall. Yes, and so basically what you do is you have Trunks going over that wall and going into that opposite universe, meeting Goku, telling him that, hey, on this day, the androids are going to show up and they're going to kill your fr friends, and friends and family, which he got it wrong because Dr. Juro and his clown robot, as they call it, <laughs> <laughs> I'm Android 8. I'm Android something. Look at my trucker hat. Oh, no. That's 13. Oh, I'm Android 13. Look at my trucker hat. He's like, I was going through a phase at that time. <laughs> yeah, and when Vegeta found out, it was even more like, don't tell my dad. But, I mean, that didn't happen in the actual anime. Just the team 4 star is a joke. <laughs> and he didn't go to a separate universe. He, by going back in time, created a new universe. <clears throat> so the universe that Goku was in, that he hadn't died yet, was a new universe. Am I? You're saying? Yeah, like when he went back in time and changed it, he created a new universe. Uh. It creates ripples in time, it's just like I don't know if you're a superhero fan, but yes, I am. Uh, Batman. The Flash runs so fast he can go through time. Oh yeah, you're right. But I said superhero. You're just a joker. But yeah, Flash can go through time. There's a movie in comic book called The Flashpoint Paradox, where the Flash goes back in time, saves his mom, but in doing that, he created ripples in time, and certain events never happened. Certain events did, and created a horrible world. So he went back in time and undid what he did, but by him creating those ripples going back in the time, he created the new 52. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which is like the butterfly effect. You change one thing in the past, and it could have drastic measures. So when he went back to the past, it created ripples in the time-space continuum. So in that other universe created, which is our main universe, certain things changed. Like Dr. Jero and Andrew 19 being there, and 17 and 18 being stronger and all the other stuff. So also, you're talking about also with Butterfly Effect, you've talked about the movie Butterfly Effect with Atch and Kutcher? No, I'm not talking about the movie. I'm talking <laughs> about the actual thing. Okay, I reckon but, okay. I, I just, I'm sorry, I heard Butterfly Effect and I was just thinking about, hey teacher, watch this! <laughs> Dude, man, what did you do, man? This is freaky, man. I, I've i never seen that movie, but I'm sure that was a funny scene. No, it's not funny. He literally takes his hands to oh. prove to this gang. Are you talking about a funny? We were laughing about the movie, and he bring me a scene that's not a funny scene. So it's like, is it a serious movie or a funny movie? What are we? It's a, okay, I'm going to, it's like, Watching this movie, after you watch it, you have to go watch something funny because literally it will tear you up inside just watching this movie. There's a few movies that will do that to you. Click is one of them. will make you laugh your butt off. But towards the end of it, you realize that the reality of that movie is not even there. And that 
it turns into a dramedy and it really grabs your heart muscles and you really love the fonts and you're just like, oh, mm. and you're like, I wouldn't want to have that kind of power. I wouldn't want to have that kind of control in my hand. Because yeah. I don't know if I could rewind through my life like that. It would. It, I would want to know what's it hasn't happened yet. So it'd be impossible to have that kind of power. I don't know if I'd use it. I, I like I'm the type of person. I'm, I'm just chill. Like I know everything will work out in the end. So I just do my best and you're have a positive joker. outlook in life. You just huh? do. I just do. Yeah, no, but like that's what I do. Like, like there's been times where I didn't know what I was, how I was gonna achieve my goals or get to where I was gonna be. I'm just like, regardless, I'm gonna get there. So I'm just gonna do my thing and do everything I feel like I need to do, and I'll get there eventually. And right now, my life is pretty good, so I'm doing something right. And I understand that you're getting back into YouTube. I you recently, uh, am I allowed to talk about that here now? Here on the podcast? Yeah. Uh, Moby right Lee here. has taken a hiatus, he told me. And now Moby Lee is coming back. And I'm hoping that since Moby Lee is coming back, you guys can go check out his channel. After watching this copacetic podcast, which I don't know if it was copacetic or not, but we're st- we have a long way to go and a short time to get there. Watch Old Bandit run. Yeah, I mean, if we want to talk about my YouTube comeback, we can talk about my series, Undone Love Story, Season 2, coming out this Friday. This Friday? Some good stuff. So shoot, now I have to... September 28th. So now I have to... So now, so he can have this out, and you guys can be prepared, I have to shotgun this podcast after I'm done recording it with him. To make sure you can put it that out it whenever can... you want, because if you put it out after, then hey, people in the future, my pat podcast. No, my this podcast is out later. My show came out on September twenty eighth. Go check it out. It's already out. If it's not out yet, hey, my podcast is coming out. Not pod. Why do I keep saying podcast? I'm on one. My show is coming out on Friday. Check it out. <laughs> Bam. There we got it. Base is covered. So bam, whether you put it before bam. or after. Thank if you're you, watching man. it before September 28th, it's coming. If you're watching it after, hey, go check it out. Because it's, it's some pretty good stuff. It's my show that I made. That I've been working on for the past year. Ooh. Well, I can't wait to see it, man. I'm excited to see that. So one subject... I, I mean, I don't know if we've ripped apart Team Four Star and we've talked about it enough, but... One subject I really want to talk about is conventions with you. And me and you met because of Playlist Live. Am I right? Yeah. Now, please tell the audience how me and you crossed paths and how we came to connect with each other and become friends. All right. Playlist Live used to be this thing where... YouTubers and creatives would get together and create content. Over the years, it's become more of a... We're going to invite the biggest YouTubers we can make money from and just do meet and greets and throw everyone else to the side. Yes. So, with that, I'm like, well, since I don't have as much subscribers as I'd want to, I have to do something to stand out. I have to do something to stand out to make people notice me because I'm trying to be known. So I decided just as one of my favorite heroes, Batman. And I'm going around, I'm doing my thing. And people taking pictures with me and I'm advertising myself. Then, while in the main convention area, I bumped into Tommy. Who was wearing a Joker tie. And was a huge Joker fan. And complete improv. Like, out of nowhere. Like, he just... Walks up to me and just starts reciting lines from Batman as the Joker. And, like, we didn't think enough. Like, we're two complete strangers. And we're just, like, just have this improv scene in the middle of everywhere. 
And then, like, camera start rolling. I was like, yo, this is great. Let's do this again. I thought it was the fact that things. James Worley, after I was doing that, J- James Worley said, I need you to come with me. And we need to go shoot this and make this magic. And he takes us up to the, the main hall that is the hotel. And we get kicked out of the main hallway. Yeah, it happened. That was in an outtake, by the way, folks. If you see in my vlog or somewhere, we got kicked out of the main hallway of the convention and got thrown back down. Which, I gotta tell you something. Playlist Live is exhausting. Because, reason why it's exhausting is because you have to dodge like a million girls, little girls, and people. And you're going down the stairs, and once you get down the stairs, there's like security staring at you, like saying... You up to no good? No, I'm just filming my vlog here. Okay, keep on walking right now. And like, and then at one point you could stop and get yourself some water and chug that, and then you're just, woo, off your way. And then you sit down and you let the day go by. And then that's just how playlist life is. It's exhausting in the brain. And meeting Moby Lee was, I think, one of the best things that I did in 2016. Plus meeting Harley Mornstein, having dinner with Harley Mornstein, and meeting Ed Bassmaster. Oh. oh. You didn't know that? No. Yeah. You got an interesting life. Huh? So you have an interesting life. Thank you. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I would say I'm friends with Harley Mornstein and Ed Bassmaster, but we, we talk off and on, on in DMs. That's what's up over here. Name dropping, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I can do that too. Like my boy Dashy XP. Me and him, we like, before he was as big as he is now, we like, I was in like five of his vlogs. We did a video together uh, on his channel and did a skit on my channel. Uh, but he stopped going to play this all together. So I haven't. Heard from him in a while. I, I did a, a couple of stuff with Sider Productions too back when they were still together. Those are cool guys. Mm. I wish all my videos got as much views as my collabs with them did. It was like over a hundred thousands of views with them, and then like I upload something, I get like a thousand, if that. Well, it's like. With YouTube, it's weird. Like, some videos would be in a thousand, some videos would be like 50 views. I'm like, what? Okay. I guess YouTube is deciding not to show my subscribers anything. So, there's people subscribe to me that don't see my stuff at all. Yeah, YouTube is YouTube is a, a fickle beast, and they, they decide you, what you see and what you don't see. And I, I find I find it to be like I like to compare YouTube to Playlist because they're all connected in together. VidCon and Playlist are all the same thing, but different masks. And one is more strict, one is less strict. Playlist Live, less strict, but I've seen the security at play, at VidCon just absolutely insane how they treat their guests. They, they just. The VIP YouTubers are just like treated like they're they're kings and queens, and then the people that are just like walking around in the main area, oh, you can't walk in this area. You don't have that right kind of badge. Really? You mean the money I paid for doesn't let me get me into this area? No, you have to pay more money, and plus we're out of those badges. So shoo. I'll tell you a story. Uh- Okay, which is the I was just gonna say I don't like I never had experiences like that at VidCon. I only went once. I had a good time. Really? Yeah, it was like 2013 now. Wow, that's decent, man. Um, my yeah, it was in a record black. It was great. Hmm. What's your story? My story is I'm not gonna I'm not gonna uh. Ex- say who the YouTuber was. He was a big YouTuber. I'm good friends with this guy. And he promised me that he'd have lunch with dinner with us. And he did. I was with the God of Cringe. Uh, you ever heard of him? The God of Cringe? 
coffee in not. the face. Ethan H three H three. Oh, AC H three. That he's called the God of Cringe. No, no, the guy he got. He did a video on the God of Cringe. He did a video, but I met Joel. I've, I've not. The God of Cringe. Um, I was hanging out with him. He was the reason why I went to Playlist Live 2018. And um, basically, what happens is this YouTuber, we have dinner with him. He promises he can get us into a YouTube party. Um, and I have Harley. I have doubts. Like, we're going to find him. We locate him. We're following him around like like his, like his, we're his animals. Like, we're just, we're like, we're pr- I'm praying to God. I'm like, pray. Please, God, let us get into this. And I'm like, and I'm like, and he goes to where even where we lose him for a second. And I actually got to meet the guy who dresses up like the Indian. You know, has the white face and everything. Black eyes. Social repo. All right. Repose or something. You do not know who I'm talking about. I don't, but I'm listening. Okay, sorry. I'm the, I'm just looking at your expression. You're like, I have no idea who this guy is talking about. <laughs> oh my god. Ah! I apologize. Sorry. Nothing to apologize for. It's not your fault I don't know these people. Huh? But your story. I said, it's not your fault. I don't know these people. You don't have to apologize. Yeah. So basically what happens is um, this YouTuber gets us into the back room. He starts walking us where I know that we shouldn't be. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. And my heart starts to lighten up. I'm like, oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my heart's just like, oh, my gosh. 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 <laughs> I'm just like, we shouldn't be here. We shouldn't be here. We shouldn't be here. My, it's just going, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, we shouldn't be here. We shouldn't be here. Oh my gosh. We get to the back, and the security guard looks at the big YouTuber. He says, you can be here. One, two, three, peasants, basically. In my mind, I heard, one, two, three, you don't belong here, peasants. That's what I heard in my head. Negative. The negative side of my brain was just like... Going... I, at that moment, if I was a super saiyan... If I was a, if I was a saiyan, I think I would have gone super saiyan at that moment. My hat would have flown off. And I would have been like... Aah! And they're like... Sir, are you okay? Ask me again if I'm okay. What am I? Uh, uh, music playing in the background and everything. (laughs) I mean, stuff like that personally. I understand. It's just their rules. That same type of thing happened to me. I performed with a good friend of mine, Stamish Streetlight. He's one of the best rappers in the world. And, um,. I was performing with him. I was his hype man. And when I went backstage with him, they didn't want me there because I didn't have the right badge, even though I was performing with him, which was dumb. But I just walked to the front and then like right before the performance happened, they brought me backstage and we went on stage and did our thing, which was pretty cool. But I mean, stuff like that, that guy's just doing his job. His orders. But you, know. you want to hear something funny? What? Afterwards, we were walking out as they were booting us out because the YouTuber couldn't do anything. He said he was going to call us and say he can get us a wristband. And as we're walking out, I walk in this big cloud of smoke, and I know what marijuana smoke smells like. And I, and I'm like, and I turn to my my friend Joel. And I say, "They're smoking marijuana back here," and I'm like. We're in a state that this is illegal. And I'm like, Playlist Live. 
I'm shaking my finger, by the way. Folks, he can't see what I'm doing. But I'm like, in my brain, I'm like, playlist. Well, I'll you watch it after YouTube, and I'll, I'll see this. You are a very bad man. <laughs> very bad man. Very bad man. That's a reference to Seinfeld and the Indian man that he he messes up and pretty much gets him shipped back to India because... His businesses fail because Jerry Seinfeld tells him to keep doing different ideas. I keep doing what you keep telling me to do. And none of these ideas work. So Apu has to go back to this country. And eventually he gets sent back to his country and calls Jerry. He's like, my, my, it's like, my, he's like, Oh, well, like, I forgot to send you your visa. So the people take him away because his visa was never sent back. I don't know if you're a Seinfeld fan or not, but it was one of the funniest episodes. One, well, I don't know if it's funny, but at the same time, it's like, but at the end of the seasons, when they wrapped up Seinfeld, I never realized when they get locked up in jail... That that was the last episode of Seinfeld, by the way. I never realized that. Spoiler alert for people. I mean, I never watched it. I'm never going to watch it. But what about the people who just yesterday was like, hmm, Seinfeld, I'm going to give this show a try. And you just spoiled the ending. <laughs> Everybody's just like, well, Tommy, this had is what long we enough to watch it. I'm flipping myself off, by the way. This is literally the people. Oh! <laughs> Ow! And I just—I well, have a question you. for you. Yes. Uh, you mentioned Keemstar, like, because I don't, I don't really follow YouTube drama or anything like that. Would didn't you guys like have drama or something? Like you talked about you on his channel. I will just go into definition to describe that Keemstar was on my channel, on my smaller channel. He was on your channel. Yeah, he was on my smaller channel, the same channel that I interviewed you on. And um Keemstar tried to expose me for being fake. And we kind of talked on a mutual ground where I was kind of like, I don't like you, I like you, I don't like you, I like you, I don't like you, you're irrelevant, and that's Keemstar. Let's talk about a guy that's retarded and that is doesn't listen to a popular YouTuber. I said, who's that? You, Tom, you're irrelevant. Your channel's dead. And, like, that right there ripped out my heart. Like, just the shock of him saying that to me. Couple years later, I'm still making YouTube videos, but that still has ripped out a part of my soul after he called me irrelevant and he called me retarded. You know, that's still a little scar inside of me that is a bullet hole that goes through me, and I can say, Oh, look, that looks pretty. A Christmas decoration. I call that the Keemstar wound. The wound right there. I could stick my finger in there. I feel like you shouldn't let things like that get to you because name calling and things like that shouldn't matter. And if he as a person doesn't like isn't close to you or have a big impact on your life, then his words shouldn't mean anything. That's with all things in life. I guess but nothing anyone says to me is gonna affect me in the long run. Because at the end of the day, I'm still the international superstar Moby Lee. And at the end of the day, you're still Tommy. Whether somebody likes you or not, whether they, they think you're a peasant or a retarded or whatever, like, at the end of the day, you're still Tommy. You're still a cool dude. You're still the same person. And whatever words they use or expressions they say, like, you're still you. Um, thank you, Moby Lee. You're a good inspirational speaker. That was a great inspirational speech you just gave me there, and that really, I do appreciate that a lot. You, that's very uplifting. And I gotta say that, um, I don't know where, I'm at a word of a loss here, because, like, you really kind of just patched up 
I mean, a lot of people have talked to me. A lot of people have said stuff to me. And to try to break through, but I think that your words are really strong. And you have a lot to you. And I think that you know who I am? And my, how I plug myself, how I promote myself? Would you like to hear it? Yeah. Okay. Where's my hat? Okay, I don't okay. know. I can't Here see. I go. Okay. Here I go. My name is Tommy NC 2010. I have come from here to there. And I have met in the middle. And I have made fire. I have set the stage every single time. I have help along the way. But I have still gone down the path of righteousness. And I still set the stage every single time with every single thing in my belt. That fills up my belt with my massive belt buckle. That fills up the energy of positivity and entertainment. And as I fill up this void of the spectrum of autism, I blow it up with my mind. Because the fact is I set the stage no matter what and no matter how. I set the limits, I make the rules, then I change the rules. Roddy Roddy Piper, rest in peace. But the fact is, to set down the lines here, I am Tommy in C2010. I have dominated comedy, I have dominated MTV's Made, I have dominated Taj.0 two times now, two time champion. And I am Tommy NC2010 World Heavyweight MTV's Made Slash Comedy Central Two-Time Champion of the World. And I'm telling you that I'm keeping you on the inside fact. Subscribe, support, stay positive, and that is the bottom line. Yeah. down of fedora removal as undertaker scream and say I'm Tommy in C2010 and now you know the rest of the story how was that is it was that the end of it was that the outro yeah that was the outro oh hey we did our thing. We blew it up. I agree. I feel like... How often do you want to do these? Mm hmm How often do you want to do these? Because I'm off on Mondays and Tuesdays. We're not... Hold on a second. Let me end off the podcast real quickly, and then we'll, we'll discuss that, okay? So, folks... Oh, I thought that was the outro. We still... <laughs> over here. You got to add that part out. I'm this, dude, this is going to be raw. This is going to be serious raw. Like, like this, this is going to be... Here. There's going to be no like, edits. Like, you, I... Look. He said that was the outro. I thought it was. I thought we were talking. We are still on the podcast. I'm the one with egg on my face now. So I feel like the least everybody could do after that embarrassment was to, <laughs> is to subscribe to my channel. Yes. To subscribe to Moby Lee. Please. And and if you don't, then I'm gonna have to cause some type of drama so I can get Kim started talking about me so I can feud with them. Oh, cut some need, promo. Off you them. don't need Keemstar. You know I'm who you need? I'm gonna get in the drama side of you too, so my name can be popping. I'm a I'm a fight Jake Paul and Logan Paul at the same time. And I might get Shane Dawson to do a documentary on me. 
and I'm going to date and break up with Trisha Paytas. I'm going to be in David Dobrik. I got I, all of it. Watch Get your mouth, wallet. by the way. Trisha Paytas. What do you mean? Let me tell you something. Trisha Paytas is my crush, okay? You understand me? Okay. I mean, I feel like Jason Nash wouldn't approve of that, but... <laughs> I'm like, I, I look at him and I'm like, what a lucky man. <laughs> and I I love Jason Nash so much because... And I'm going to do a video on him eventually. Just, he appreciates everything that he has. And you can tell, is he such a genuine dude? And, like, he does stuff for his kids. And when you see his kids, you can tell he loves his kids. And he loves his mom. And just, like, grateful for everything he has. And all the opportunities. And, like, you don't see that that often. Because you see these young kids get all this fame super fast. And they're super cocky. Like, Jason Nash is, like, he's been through a lot. <laughs> He he knows what it's like to struggle and like he he has all this success now. He he appreciates it. So I love I love seeing him do good. Now is Trisha Paid um, Trisha Paytas married or is she just dating him? No, they're just dating. They're just dating. I admire her Instagram. I heard that uh if you're a patron of hers you can get certain rewards, I heard. Yeah, you should. Go become a Patreon of her. I don't know if I'm ready for that. I don't know if my heart's ready for Because <laughs> I heard you get certain benefits with that. And I'm like, I don't know if I'd be like... Hey, all your dreams, man. You gotta live your best life. Sorry. Follow your nose. Follow the rainbow. So, folks, as always, we're going to end off the podcast here. This is podcast one. You decide what the name of this podcast will be. Yeah, as you always, decide. As always, remember one thing. Just remind you something before we end it. When you are doing OBS, remember, always po never point towards this side of the room when you're talking about somebody. Always point to this side of the room because it's the opposite of where the person actually is. But in the illusion, in the mirror world, I'm pointing towards my kitchen, really. But I'm actually pointing towards Moby Lee, which I'm poking him right now. Never poke the bear. I, I assume what he's saying is true. I'm a cosigner, although I don't see him. But, hey, just listen. I listen could be making can... some gestures right now that you don't know about. I don't. I don't know. You could be completely taking advantage of me right now. I wouldn't know. That sounds wrong and dirty at the same time. Hey, you can take it however you want to take it. You know what's I, wrong? Some people may be right to others. A brief message from Elmo. Elmo just wants to say everybody is sick and demented all at the same time. But Elmo's well, <laughs> Elmo can speak for itself. I'm I'm a pretty good pure Kind-hearted, gentle soul. I'm a good Christian boy. I'm not sink or demented, so. What are you trying to say there? Are you saying I'm sick and demented? Hey, I almost said it, not me. That's that, that's his words. I don't know. <laughs> but, folks, this is Moby Lee. Subscribe to his channel. The link will be in the description is... below. I don't think there will be a thumbnail on this video. It will just be raw, and you give us it what you... Be. Huh? It might be something you never know. It might just pop up. It might be one right here. You can't just, you know. Who knows when this is coming out? So you gotta just it's a hope. Expect the best thing you ever seen because that's what's gonna come from this. <laughs> As right, always This is Moby Lee, international yeah. superstar. Thumbs up this video. Subscribe if you haven't. And until next time, peace. Moby Lee, a.k.a. Mr. Muscular Chest. It's going to become a thing, trust me. And Tommy and C2010, World Heavyweight, MTB's made Comedy Central's champion world, two-time champion, dropping it every single damn night of the week, putting people through tables. Oh, yes, what a rush. As always, I'm Tommy and C2010. Subscribe, support, stay positive, keeping you... 
on the inside. Pause for thumbnail. Fact. Catch you later, folks. Bye bye for now. Bye bye. Malkaida with another V. Sorry, I shouldn't have done that. You don't know who Mark Hyder is, do you? Nope. Illusion. The illusion. It's here on Spaceship Earth.